All right, getting the black pieces, facing the English opening. We're just going to be trying to transpose back into our humble slav defense where we're playing it as a reverse land system. So going to get a bishop out to f5. And it could be going back into the Catalan in case of d4. He could play b3, go double fianchero, but seems to be transposing into like the typical Catalan where I think bishop d6 is working pretty well. Bishop to b2. Hey, Jonathan, thank you for the five gifters, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you for that, buddy. You're too nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, opponent goes bishop to b2. Just gonna go... 94 activate, I guess just sort of preparing to trade everything on e4. Okay, he could do knight h4, that's a move. That is for sure a move. Pretty interesting decision that I have now because I can castle, I can play knight f6, kind of like, okay, like the problem with knight f6 is maybe he goes cd and taking with the knight feels a little awkward. I think I'll just go back and I don't really mind him like taking and bishop before d, that's like great, so probably will take. Maybe we can I play like a dutch, why not? But you guys like the Dutch defense, so why wouldn't we play for such things? <laughs> What's wrong with the Dutch? Come on. Oh, he goes f3. Those we take, don't ask me why. <laughs> He's just the hand that makes the moves sometimes. Knights under attack, must take. Probably will, but then it's going to open up a pretty big rook, you know, just saying. Hey guys, I think this might actually end up being pretty instructive game, Pog. Or do you find these kind of blunders instructive or not? That's what you should let me know. And by the way, important earlier. I have played uh, bishop d6 because his pawn is already committed to d4. If he, Let's say instead of d4 he plays b3, I would normally develop the bishop to e7 when he still has d3 ideas. Because he could follow it up with e4, e5. But when he plays d4, it's pretty obvious this is not going to be such a big problem. And the bishop on d6 is okay placed. Okay, he just takes on d5. Collect. Poor guy knight. That's a mate zone. Just resigns. Get the free win. All right, that's nice. Any brilliant moves? Let's see. Chess.com is really kind with us tonight. Giving us a lot of brilliant moves. Is 9g3 another one of them? Let's see. Yes, another brilliant move. Let's go. <laughs> oh, come on. How is this a brilliant move? The most obvious tactics. Just that comes too kind. Maybe they are just sort of doing it on purpose to make you feel good about yourself and buy diamond memberships. It can't be that. <laughs> There's no way it can be something like that, guys. Come on. Hey, Brett. Welcome to the stream. Feels nice having you here from YouTube. You play that and just won in 16 moves. I won in 12. Good luck beating that. <laughs> it was not really a Dutch that I played, but you know. Uh, right, getting another game. With the black pieces, opponent going for the ready, just gonna play d5, try to get the normal slavish setup, just um, knight f6, c6, bishop f5, 
taking would be a big mistake because that's a huge bishop. It's like really important for them. D4 not very critical. He's like restricting the bishop. Just D6, 97. Developing in normal fashion. Now that the pawn is committed to D4, we will probably play with bishop D6 once again. I just uh, go sort of double fianchero. We're just chilling. E6, bishop D6. We could make a loop if I want. There's like no really. There's no rush with a Luft. Luft is fine, but I'll just like castle. We'll also play knight e4. Let's just start with knight e4. Is he gonna do the same? I'm kind of enjoying playing with the h file. But actually, like knight h4, now I'll have to take on d2. Need to castle. To be honest, I'm not like such a huge fan of this move. I think h6 was better. More solid. 94 feels a bit inaccurate. Well, it's not like such a bad bishop, but uh, I wouldn't really say it's restricting it. It's kind of typical position, really. Now, I may have allowed a good version of knight h4 for a couple of moves already, which I'm not happy about. I think if he does that, he could potentially gain an edge. Maybe. Other than that, we're fine. If he takes take with a bishop, very nice equal position. Yeah, I think here, like the fury would be h6. I think I looked this up and we just transpose to c4 lines. Now, again, I'm kind of skeptical. That's a good move indeed. I have to probably take because like bishop g6 he takes and then we drop this. Alternative is this move, but then cd5 is like a little bit annoying. Playing this structure after knight f5 could be interesting, but it's not working. Have to take. Either rook. Now, this move, I'm not so sure it works. It may work, because knight f1, there's knight d6. But both knights are trapped. I have queen c7. Oh, but then he's got c5 keeping it. Then I can't escape with my knight. So it's going to be having... Two pieces for the rook can be better. Knight of one, no good move. No bueno. We have to take and play a pretty sad position. It is not that sad. Just knight f6, cd5, knight e5. If he's willing to give up his beautiful Catalan bishop, I'll take it. And other than that, rook e knight e4. I guess just very slightly better for white, but pretty tough to play. Black has pretty easy moves and position is still quite solid. Take with a knight. Please give me the Catalan bishop. We'd love that. Okay, e4. Glad to see he's creating an isolated pawn. I was actually wondering how can we ever win this position? Now I got the answer. So, play knight back, hit the bishop. I want to keep this pawn isolated there. Goes back. Now, I really want to stop these kind of things, because you will just liquidate it in a draw. Maybe there's no way to actually avoid it already. But I'll, I'll need to find one. Maybe just queen b6 move, d5 takes, bishop takes, rook a d8. Yeah, I think he's in trouble after that. No, it's not, because I have to like even take with a knight there. Oh my god, if he plays d5, I think he's like forcing a draw. Kind of kicking myself for that. But to be honest, I don't really think I can like really avoid it at this point. Maybe I had in this position to play bishop move yeah i had to play bishop c7 rook d1 95 that i was so bad for not doing that bishop c7 95 was a must and also in this position just bishop c7 maybe knight f6 was weak i'm like really annoyed for missing such chance now he could do d5 and i can't play rook d8 because of bishop f6 and our king is in danger d5 we have to take bishop takes pawn takes queen takes 
rook d8. Position just equal. Maybe he could try queen g5, although f6 is kind of killing his bishop, so queen d5 taking aj should be relatively safe, I would say. Now that he's tanking so much, he might not be pushing d5, because d5 is like pretty obvious move. He might be somehow calculating it, which is very possible as well. But <laughs> like spending a lot of time on this. So maybe we could still try to outplay him in that equal position. Just goes queen g5, hoping for tricks. But how about we start attacking his queen? He felt like the queen will really stay on g5 for that long so he can be in time with d5. Well, that's not the case. Just h6, expecting him to go like queen h4. Okay, he goes to f5. Still prepping d5, but we can just go rook d8 now. And b5, we have knight captures. Wait, can he play bishop e4 there? We have g6, I think, and we're safe. Or I'd like to think that at least. Now, the difference after h6 is that we no longer get mated with queen g7, so... This is definitely a small improvement. Now, I can do knight d5 if I want to like be really solid. Bishop b8. Bishop b8 could be a move. But then still d5. Knight d5, trade everything. Not liking that. I have to play it now. Can't take twice because of bishop g3, but he can just take it once and it's like pretty dull position. But it is what it is. We we'll have to try to outplay him there. Still, I don't really believe he's going to give up the Catalan bishop. But I would be happy if he's not, so... Yeah, it just goes there. This is a move that, that I was considering previously, so now... Even gaining a tempo feels nice. Just making sure we can take back on d5 with the rook and keep the isolated pawn alive just so we can attack it. Bishop e4, there is simply g6, so we don't have to be worried about that. Because then has to move the queen, but we win the exchange because rook is under attack. Goes back, fair enough. How about we take over the open file? I've heard open files are good. That's a pro tip. Also play queen a5. Let's just take over the open file. It's way too natural not to play it. Just placing your rook onto the open file. Can't go wrong with that. Bishop e4, now we even have knight f6 option. Maybe g6 still best. Okay, h4. So he wants h5 and then bishop e4, I would assume. Now, this is interesting because bishop d5, we have rook d5. I think we're going to play that. Trying to get rid of his bishop. Yes, his bishop is like kind of passive where it is. But it will make it easier for us to try to win the deep for pawn, I would say. Now bishop e4, probably just rook e4 is easiest, although g6 wins as well. So in case he takes, my knight is going to be forcing around his e2 square. So potentially win the pawn on d4. Pawn and going down on time. Going down on the position as well. This is definitely starting to go in uh, our favor. Just give a check. Take it with a knight. Hitting his queen. And support the knight with c5. Not so sure about that because his bishop will open up. But maybe play knight e6.
goes to g4. No threats that I can see. Could potentially play f5, although that's creating some weaknesses. I think just knight e6 is a technical move, exchanging his rook. If rook d1 just trade everything on the d file, go for the end game. Actually, he can't even do that because f2 pawn will drop. Bishop e4. Yeah, I think queen d4 or something in that position. Queen there, can infiltrate, keeping an eye on the f2 pawn. Hitting this as well. King g1. He can take there, but then he can play rook d1. Yes, we don't really mind. There's knight d4. Could also play knight d4 directly, maybe. I mean, a pawn is a pawn. Rook d1, it's not like he's threatening to infiltrate anywhere. We can easily deal with that. And uh, okay, now he's preparing bishop e4. Shouldn't really be good enough. Because then simply g6 wins. And I think we just need to occupy the file. But also do bishop e4, knight f8, like funny way to defend. Then the knight's kind of passive. I guess we don't really mind it. But I like g6 and then like uh, queen f6, queen d4. Just trying to force queens off. Could also play queen d8, like queen d4, maybe queen e7, but on queen e7, I think queen d7 looks juicy. Yeah, okay, queen e7, by the way, just pick up the bishop. So I don't know, I'm just talking nonsense. <laughs> just getting a little bit too excited about the position. Take you with a knight, two extra pawns, everything is covered. Feels so nice. Pick up another one. Okay, eating and defending in the same time. Bishop f3, knight d3, threatening to win big on f2. Has to play rook f1, but then just a5. Okay, push. Just take so that he doesn't get access to e6. Still push. Okay, I've got too many pawns. Push them together. The pawns are pretty good team. Just go away too. And now rook a3. Yes, the pawns are so strong. So beautiful. Uh okay, how do we push the pawns? I'm kind of stuck. Guess just this is good enough. Winning f2, if he was taking a2, I had like rook a3 and trade the rooks. <sighs> okay, guys, it's feeling rainy over here. I think we're going to have rain in Bucharest. You can hear the thunders, but maybe it's just like that I'm winning, so. <laughs> right, opponent runs out of time, but the position was also not helping. All right, getting the black pieces. We're running against d4. Going to be trying out the reverse London system. That is what I like to call this version of the slough. But we're facing our own uh, <laughs> beast here by opponent going bishop to f4. 
So, I think I could just like try to play it super symmetrical. I could play C5. I think I'm just gonna play what I recommend in one of my videos, which is just C5, 96. But also, why do we transpose into the Karo? I think we're just gonna be using that 96, 92. Yeah, okay, knight f3 is bad because it goes queen b6 and we're better, but like, see the ed bishop g4 is just a card of transposition, just so you know. But I'm gonna play this one because it's better. He's supposed to play like 92 and get some kind of a decent game there. Now c4, he the queen, end games are like really nice. Goes for the end game. Glad to see this. Knight a3, I think. We've got many moves, perhaps. Rook a5 is a nice one, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, so that happens. Uh, okay, I think I actually even like knight a7 in this position. It looks a bit odd, but it's avoiding rook a5, bishop c7 lines, I think. This is a move as well, it's theory. And go e6 next. Killing the knight, they have to go to c2 and then... Ooh, that is a big mistake. That is not acceptable because now the knight comes back to life. This is coming to e4 next. This was not acceptable, sir. Guys, you need to take note. This is actually really five head trick that you can use. Especially knight a7 move is nice there. Even if, let's say, he was playing after e6, the correct move, which was knight c2. We're still, like, better after e5 and so on. He just literally resigned. See, like, that's how you beat the London. 11 moves. End game. No gonna play. <laughs> okay, to be honest, he was, like, really supposed to do knight c2 there. And game could continue something like here. b5, a3, and just try to, like, maneuver this knight around. Slightly better for black, but not, like, such a disaster yet. All right, guys. We're getting the black pieces. Facing d4. More often than in the lower rated games. So playing d5 and probably could be a London again. Or what is usually called the Kole, which we're just going to be playing c5 and most likely transpose back into either the Karo or when they play the Zuckertort, we're just going to be getting an improved version of the... Yeah, of the car. So I think 96 bishop b2, bishop g4, it's how this goes. And dc e5 is good for us. After h3, can just take once on f3. Queen takes, and then cd4 seems to be a strong move. Making sure this guy is a little passive. The e6. Just literally like car structure, but with pretty weird bishop on b2. Could do this, castle, rook c8, knight b4. Could also think about throwing in a check if I like really want to force c3 or this kind of move and then retreat. That could be a bit of like a subtle difference, but it's an idea, you know. Not sure I like really want to force it. We'll see. I think bishop e7 castles, rook c8, we can like pretty much pre-move. And then we'll see. Okay, knight d2. I think maybe even knight b4 in some variation could be a thing. Now... Do I want to play bishop b4? Just thinking whether this could make sense. Play 94. Rook C8.
It's like bishop b5 check, we can play king e7, bishop c1. But against that queen a5 is strong. Okay, guys, I think it could be fun. I think it could be fun. Hey, Tosh Queen, welcome to the stream. Shout out to Tosh Queen. Wait, let me do it. All right, there you have it. How are you? Okay, now, might be completely insane for doing this, but gotta give it a try. I don't know whether this is like any good, but it looks super fun. So why not play it? To be honest, maybe just bishop b5 and castle would be the easy way for my opponent. Because now I think he's like really in trouble. Bishop c1, there is rook c8, rook c1 coming. That's never saving. Should have gone bishop b5, I think, and just sort of give up on the knight and castle. But maybe that's still not good because of knight e2 and win exchange. But I don't know. I think now... Should be doing... Pretty good, huge threat. I don't really see how White is intending to stop that. Just having an amazing position. Not sure this was like any good. But, uh, looks to be working out. Wait. Rook c1, a b, that could be a problem. But then queen b4. We're threatening queen d2 mate. So rook c1, a b, queen b, he has to play like queen d3. Or queen e3. How do we continue? I don't see a way. Yeah, queen e3 only move there. Hmm. Oh my god, this is close. Taking the pawn is gonna like release a lot of the pressure. I think we have to go for the brilliancy. Here we just have to go for it. We need the only move. Bishop b5, just king e7 will have to play. That's a mistake as of rook d1. So <laughs> managed to win poor guy's queen, but I'm like wondering whether if he was like defending better, this was like any good. Was this like brilliancy or total crap? The game review. Okay, I mean. <laughs> One was plus three apparently, so maybe my sacrifice is not ideal. Let's just put it that way. Let's just put it that way. This was not ideal. Oh, queen d3, and I'm just like losing a piece. <laughs> so apparently, this is after queen e3 is somewhat equal. Okay, at least it was fun. It was a quick game, but a fun one, at least. Shouldn't have gone for this atrocity. I should just play normal chess. <laughs> Bishop here, castle, just <laughs> very solid, nice position to play. I don't know why I really play that. Mm, all right, looks like we're getting the black pieces and the opponent going for a queen spawn. Is he gonna play the London system against us? But seems to be the Queen's Gambit. Just gonna be going for our little Slav pet line, trying out the reverse London if he allows it. Against e3, we can yeah, just go for it quite easily and yeah, just play e6. Against bishop d3. I think I'll just go bishop g6, trying to keep it a bit more interesting. Taking is completely fine. Against knight h4. Got a pretty tricky one for you, bishop e4. Now they're supposed to do f3. If they take, we take with a deep pawn and the knight is gonna be sad. So against f3, just go back. Open up the file. We have created a little bit of uh, awakening in 
White scamp. Is this recommended by uh, Coach Andras for black or for white? Let me know, Mr. Birdfish. I'm not like very familiar with what he recommends in the Slav. Okay, so against this, I think Queen C7 is the move. Because Queen B6, I don't really want to go into the end games. Maybe I could do Queen B6 and C5, Queen C7. I don't really remember how this goes. So Queen C7, G3. Knight BD7. I guess Queen B6 first is fine. Just inviting this and after that, B7 square will be safer. I don't really remember how this variation goes. To be honest, it's like a pretty rare guest. Most of the white players are not going for it. And I was assuming the end games after he takes are okay for us. I don't think this e4 play should be really critical. I was thinking bishop b4 should be pretty strong for us now. I also could take and play like e5. Yeah, I think that's what I like. So I could do bishop b4 and then bishop d3 e5. Maybe that's even better. Bishop d3, by the way, rook h4 is not to be ignored. Maybe he wants g3 there. But then rook g4. <laughs> so how about this move against e5? There's rook d4. E f6, rook d3, takes on g7. Hmm. I could also just play this in knight g4, bishop f4, knight d7. So I think this is a little bit iffy after e5. Then knight e4 actually could be a move. And I'm like so liking rook h4, but then g3. Yeah, rook h4 also bishop g5 needs to be considered. No, I think I'm just going to go with a positional sack. Um, yeah, and like d5, I think we're like, okay, after knight e7, knight c5. a3 not really creating a threat because of the pin. Am I going to make uh, more accessible courses? I actually am working on one that should be released in like seven weeks from now, which is dedicated to the Scandinavian gambit. And I'm thinking to take more like in the future. People have been requesting a Karo Khan one, which I have in mind, but still just haven't decided yet. So... Just take with the bishop. Now we should be much better because we have good against bad bishop because his b bishop is restricted by his own pawns while mine is such a happy camper. Controlling the whole board. Would be thinking of like throwing in the pony like this. Castle's long. I could do knight g4, knight f2, looks like pretty tempting. There's like no way for his knight to like jump around and it's more connected to the fact that the bishop's also under attack. h2 pawn could be vulnerable in some lines, it's just that all my pieces are developed. I don't even need to castle because my rooks are already so damn active. Like all of my pieces are doing such a great job while his are not really that amazing, I would say. I've got so beautiful rooks, oh my god. I find it rare that you have both files open like this, or maybe it's just me. Isn't it, guys, unique? I find that pretty unique. <laughs> like, in what world do you have both rooks activated like this? 
<laughs> Come on, this is like the ni nicest position that I've ever had. Oh my god. We can pick up the rook. Centralize the bishop. Oh my god, this is just like getting better and better. A2 pawn about to drop. He's still like, his rook needs to be passive because mine is hitting this. It's like hilarious. <laughs> it's like absolutely hilarious. So I think we just get rid of this, double up the pawn, and now time to bring the king over. King's gonna go there, and this is gonna be a pretty weak pawn. Okay, just uh, getting my king on the c5. Idea is to maybe undermine at some point. Also, could play f6 to have everything defended. Let's protect everything. We we'll consider doubling up on the A file eventually. A G file, making sure all of my pawns are on the dark squares. This could be an idea to activate a rook. Uh, this could be interesting. CB5, CD5, potential plan. Also, CB5 just taking seems fine. Yeah, so now this is pretty good. G3 runs into rook takes, and I'm friending just to infiltrate over. Getting a pretty good version, I must admit. <laughs> All of my pieces are ideally placed. Not really that much you can do. A4. If we trade rooks, that is easy win. If he keeps, I'm going to infiltrate, which is for sure a step into the right direction. Now, I think taking it this way makes a bit more sense. I don't, I don't really want to double all of the pawns. Like, taking this way is an idea if I want to get my king to e5. Probably both are winning, if you ask me, but uh, I just think that the later one is a little bit riskier. Hmm, yeah, I'll just keep it pretty simple. There's no no need to like take the weird way. Now I could even sack the pawn because of e4 ideas. So I think I want to bring the rook first. This pawn's like protected anyways. And yeah, it looks like he's trying to get a bishop around. We don't really mind it. Would be playing this move. Maybe just g6, keeping ideas to break with f5. I think that's like the <laughs> main uh, pawn break that we have. Not super sure about rook ag8, whether it was necessary or not, but in these positions, you can definitely take the time and make many, let's say, Slower moves until you figure out the right plan. Opponent doesn't have any ways to like punish you for doing these things. Maybe King C2 now interesting. I just take. Well, maybe DC then. This could be a move. F5, King D3. Maybe then we'll have Rook A8. Now if he goes for the passive. Route, I think King C2 was the only chance. Now this feels... This feels beatable. So there are like many ways to play this. It's pretty funny. It looks like he's gonna be in a Zugzang soon. Like if I just play Rook AJ, he's literally in a Zugzang. 
He doesn't have any moves. <laughs> He's gonna have to take. That is a hilarious Dugzvan, guys. Do you see? Like, if he moves the king, then pawn drops. If he moves the bishop, this drops. He doesn't have any other moves. Has to take, but that's a concession because I get the pass pawn. But I think, like, a pretty nice example of a Dugzvan. All of his moves are losing something. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he goes d6, losing the pawn, but that's classical Zugzwang. Maybe I could have played rook d8 and take it with the rook. Would have been a little bit more accurate, I agree. Just rook a8, trying to play c5, and on king b5 we have king c7 with the mating net. I'm gonna push c5 and then he's gonna be in Zugzwang again. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> okay, h4, the problem with that move, it's a pawn on the light square, so. I mean, <laughs> on the dark square, so the light square bishop cannot protect it. Could do this, but now we push. Pretty, yeah, pretty easy and game to convert, and that's why he resigned. So we managed to get the game. So I was not very familiar with the opening. Um, biggest question that I have is whether after queen b3, queen b6 was precise. Apparently, it was not. Queen c7 is like a little bit better. I couldn't really recall the exact theory. This is like I find it to be a pretty rare line, even though it's like quite a lot of theory going from here. It's been definitely debated at a uh, high level here in like, the top grand master games, but um, decided to make this move. And okay, e4 was not a good move. He's supposed to play it slower with bishop d2, king f2, and just enjoy the bishop head in a long uh, game. But after this, it really felt like, you know, be doing okay. Apparently, all my moves made sense, which is. Not always the case. That's so nice, Rooks. Can we get a game review? Curious what it was. There's not like really that much I can add on the game. I think everything was pretty clear. Mm. Okay. For some reason it takes a while to generate the game review. But I guess the game was pretty long in itself. We put him in a Zugzwang, which is... Not that common, but always very satisfying. Is this candy gambit sound? I think it is way more sound than other gambits. Plus, I discovered some new ideas with Lila, which I think makes it incredibly fun to play, especially in low rated games. Like, you'd be shocked to see how poorly low rated players handle this candy in itself. Plus, it's also going to be covering the exchange variation of the. Karo Khan, because they can transpose after e4, d5, ed5, c6. They could, like, not accept the gambit and play d4 or knight c3. That happens a lot. Okay, apparently scored a 92. There was, like, a bug with the <laughs> analysis, but got it done. Mm, all right, looks like we're getting the black pieces, and... Facing the ready, and never mind, we're back into like the D4 kind of games, and back into a slav. Gonna be trying my uh, little pet line with bishop to f5. Looking forward to see if they're down to try and punish me with queen b3. Now it just takes. When they take is pretty nice, one thing you need to know is just to take with a knight in these positions. This is really important guys, do not take with a pawn, because knight b5 is huge. Take with a knight, and we're pretty chill in the end games usually. Just knight c6, e6, f6 usually, controlling the e5 square. He's stopping my knight before move. Well, he's not. No, I made an inaccuracy. Should have played e6, 
instead of this night before would have been probably winning. Oh my god, such a such a missed opportunity I rushed. That was literally winning the rook. What was it? He has king d1, knight c2, rook a2. But it's like a lizard repetition there. <laughs> now if I go knight b4, he has castles, knight c2, and rook a2. I can still force a draw there. I don't want to force a draw. I think we just play normal. Oh, also, by the way, knight a5, funny move. Knight a5, he's got knight e2, though, to protect. Yeah, I won't play knight a5. Hey, live from Starbucks, how's it going? Bishop e4 could be a move as well, just kind of taking and healing this. I think I like bishop e4, just... Putting pressure on this um, diagonal, kind of forcing him to play e3, and then maybe knight a5, knight b3, because this thing is pinned. So now this is much better. Imagine we can get knight b3, rook a2, bishop b1. That would be so nice. That would be amazing, really. I don't really see how he's willing to stop. Like maybe bishop d2 only move. Knight b3, rook d1, bishop c2 still wins exchange. I think he's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so. Apparently, you can win with black in these end games in like 10 moves. Believe it or not, no clickbait. I think we're like winning here. Maybe b4 is a move. Oh my god, no way we're gonna have this on the board. <laughs> oh no, I feel so dirty for doing this to my opponent. Look at that rook. Look at that a2 rook. Oh my goodness. What is happening? Such a sad rook. He has rook a1 and then bishop d2, but still lost. <laughs> Such a disaster. Oh my god. Oh my god, he just resigned. So, I think if you're like really kind of a fighter player, you could do this and bishop d2, winning back one of the pieces. You're still lost, but maybe play on for a bit. But uh, that was a nice one. Curious about like a game review. Oh my god, looks like we also promoted. I don't even know what that means, but. <laughs> okay, we got a 94. Not bad. Queen b3. One of the most problematic lines of the whole system. Handled it well. Just remember from this game. You want to be taking with a knight on d5. Because taking with a pawn is pretty painful after knight b5. So. Do it this way. Then, okay, I could have got knight before in the first place, as I said. Now bishop e4 was precise, it seemed. Knight a5, and he's just like doomed. Should try rook a1, as I pointed it out, but uh, still lost. Uh, all right, getting the black pieces. Looks like we're facing a lot of d4s between 17 and 1800, so. What a good time to have a look on the Slav, right? I know. So, let's just play knight f6. And definitely gonna continue with my pet line. Going bishop f5. Hopefully he's gonna play queen b3 and try to challenge my setup. That's like the most concrete approach. Too bad he just plays with e3, leading to pretty dull structures that are usually gonna lead to sort of equal boring games. Some people may argue. Now, I know e6 is a move. I'm not like super sure. Maybe rook c8 is precise. Just so uh, we can meet like 95 with bishop d7. But I can't really remember. Yeah, I think maybe this is the trick. I also play knight d7 here. Mm. Don't quite remember this. Have to be honest. Could be 97 because 95, there's 95. D5, queen a5, knight back. <clears throat> hmm. Oh my gosh, I know it's something here, but I don't really remember what it was. So it's knight d7 or bishop d7, but bishop d7, bishop d3, and I don't get what we do.
I don't understand that position either. Maybe we take and we have bishop e4. So I think we just do this. I don't know. My memory is a little bit rusty on this line. I remember looking at it at some point, but um, let's see. It just like sort of transposed to the exchange. I haven't looked it up this move order, but it seems like we have a transposition. Is that rook b8? Pretty safe. Do not go to a8 because bishop b7 is a problem, but this should be okay. Preparing to finish development. Do I want to go to d6? I mean, that's a fine square. I don't really need it because maybe he'll play e4 in the future. I think just to e7 castle and then c5. That's kind of the plan. Whenever he get, goes e4, our bishop won't be a target. Did I blunder? No, I had it. Oh, I realized it the second I made my move. I had queen a5. I feel so bad. I was just autopiloting. Jeez, this would have been a piece so bad. <laughs> All right, just play c5. DC, maybe this is a strong move. Yeah, I think exchanging is good here. Oh, wow, he goes for the exchange sack. Some bold moves from my opponent, Jesus. Okay, I was not expecting this. So, okay, maybe bishop f6 might have not been the best. Like knight c5, sort of easy draw, just trade knights and then play back bishop e7 f6. Equal game. Now, this could either be better for me or worse. There's no in between, I think. Probably gotta take that. I see no reason why I start queen a5. And if we could somehow place our knight onto c6, I guess we would be fine, but easier said than done. Okay, here at least we have rook d8. So he's now sort of forced to go back. After which, maybe we could play rook c8. Or maybe use the other one, in fact, just to avoid any tricks. So I'm telling you guys, we're either better or worse. That's it. Stopping me from playing queen e2, I think that's a good move. Knight b6 also interesting move. Hmm. Rook b4, kind of funny idea. You'd be surprised, but this is not that stupid. Like bishop b4, queen b4, and then... Maybe win c5, but there is c6, and it's maybe not that clear. I don't really want to calculate that. We could win the pawn. That would be like making it clear, but it's maybe not better. Now we can actually play knight e5 since queen's no longer covering it. So against f4, we could do knight d 3 as well. Hmm. If he takes, I mean, we're happy with that. If he plays queen d1, I don't really think we can go knight takes and just stack like that. Although that's an option. So like knight takes, he's going to go bishop takes, and then we go uh, rook takes, knight takes, queen takes. Equal material, but he's got weak pawn. I think I just want to do that. I could play knight c6 and just maybe be slightly better or like 
try to keep the material. Okay, when they take, I think we just go bishop b5 next. And I was thinking this should be clearly better. Maybe I was wrong. Mm. So if I do this, knight c3 will happen. Maybe bishop e4. Not sure I want to throw in bishop e2. Oh my god, this is so complicated. Why? <laughs> hmm. It's just bishop a6. We don't need to like bring his knight into the game. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, that was a strong move, but how about bishop b5 now? I think we tricked him. Now, there's no way for him to threaten mate actually, and knight c3 drops the pawn compared to like the previous lines, so. I think bishop b2 was a mistake. Now bishop c3 just queen a6 or like queen back. Be good. It's easy to like miss these moves back and forth, but you you have to like really get good at this kind of thing of always considering something. Because here, as I was saying, like bishop b5 was not the greatest move because of knight c3 back, not so clear. But now after bishop b2, he no longer has knight c3. So it's important to like always sort of refresh your brain and look for candidates. And now we just have an easy win after doing that. Eliminate the knight, take the pawn on c5, extra exchange, so many open files. It is just a very easy win here. Probably gonna force queens off very soon. Hitting this and that. Yeah, just pick up the bishop, there's no mate. Okay, exchange queens, of course. Extra rook. Confident about my endgame skill. So he just resigns. All right. I don't know. Like, the only sort of thing that I'm, like, worried about is whether I managed to recall the opening precisely or not. Because in this position, after bishop b5, yeah, apparently rook c was right. Like, the easy move to pre-move is just to play e6. But I knew we, we could get in trouble after e6. Yeah, there's like this 95 move that's problematic. I was aware, like I, I looked it, this up like via transposition from like the exchange mainline and it's important to start this way with 97. And I just like was curious, what if they take on d5? I couldn't remember this. Yeah, so I saw this position in my head and I was like, okay, knight f4. Oh, and there's just queen a5 winning, yeah. So it was important here to not play the automatic e6 move because you're just worse but after rook c8 this line is just nothing for white i looked it up 97 and um very equal position maybe bishop d6 even a bit more active yeah and here I, as i as i said like queen if i was winning a piece but i just pre-moved castling <laughs> and now okay it should be equal just taking and playing it this way was simplest and then on bishop be too important to just go back i feel like back with bishop f6 and it's easy equality it feels the way i played it i thought we win but after bishop a3 no longer clear okay we both made like normal moves oh knight c4 here was a strong move that i did not consider here I was about to give back the exchange after queen d1, but we're still like better as I uh, as I planned, because there's a weak pawn and on queen d2 we have rook c8 and we're just so much better. This queen's infiltrating. This feels like we could have pushed for a win, even though it's not that much. And okay, bishop a6, curious whether that was good. Computer prefers queen a6. Uh, okay, after bishop b2, bishop b5, clearly top move, and his position now falls apart. 